so I'm here to show us you about the market updates. So Treasury default crisis is a preliminary agreement has reached, but the alert is far from lifted. After the weeks of intensive negotiations, the two parties finally reached an agreement in principle on Saturday evening to resolve the country's debt ceiling. However, the deal will need to be quickly passed by the U.S. Congress to truly remove the alarm of the U.S. debt default, and thus it will be a vicious battle. After an initial deal, Biden said it represented a compromise for him, while Republican House Speaker John McCarthy said it made a historic cut in spending. Looking back at the debt ceiling game, the paradox is that the Republicans want to strike a big deal to cut government spending while adjusting the debt ceiling, while Democrats insist on adjusting it relatively independently, unwilling to compromise too much on spending cuts. Many analysts argue that the product of this compromise may not satisfy either the more radical Republican legislators nor satisfy the left wing of the Democratic Party. The cuts in the package are almost certainly both too modest to win, the tough conservative vote and too harsh to win the House radicals. As a result, many media comments said that the prospect of the agreement in both the House and the Senate may be bumpy. CCTV News quoted the Washington Post as saying it was a difficult task to pass the current troubled and divided Congress in a short time. According to McCarthy's timetable, the House of Representatives will vote it next Wednesday before sending it to the Senate. The Treasury Department said on Friday that the government would default on June 5th if Congress failed to pass the deal in time. As a result, the Congress must successfully vote for bills before the X day to avoid a default on its debt. If next week's vote will slightly slip, the potential risk of a technical default is far from disappearing. Bipartisan cooperation is a must, and fix the thorn is the key after the 2022 midterm elections. Democrats and Republicans control the Senate and the House of Representatives, respectively. So the two parties must cooperate to allow the bill to pass both houses. However, as mentioned above, the con contradiction of the con is that both party activists may be difficult to bill concessions. Senators from each party may find diff different reasons against the bill. Party for right Republicans may think spending cuts is insufficient, and part of the Democratic left-wing politi politicians may think they give too much to the Republicans. So the bipartisanship is the key to resolve the issue. According to the political, White House officials have informally calculated that McCarthy, without a portion of the Republican vote, would need to get up to 100 Democratic votes to ensure the final debt selling deal with the 280 majority. And the deal through the House, it is worth noting that if the bill is seriously blocked in the House, Democrats could also adopt a little used emergency strategy to release a petition to clean and put no conditional vote on the debt ceiling. While Democrats support the move, enough Republican majority needs to be persuaded to join or succeed. Uh, moreover, Biden could try to invoke the untested legal theory of the 14th Amendment to the U.S. United States Constitution, which states that the validity of American public debt must not be questioned, clearing the way for him to authorize more borrowing. However, that could immediately be questioned in the court. If passed in the House, the bill is passed to the Senate. In the Senate, the bill needs to the support of at least nine Republicans to get the 60 out of 100 to continue the legislation. In the Democratic Senate, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has fully control over when the bill will vote. Media analysts say, but however, individual senators can delay the process by sticking to procedural procedures, including 30 hours of debate on whether to start debate or another 30 hours to debate on the bill itself. The Senate needs to pass the bill without changing the House bill. Otherwise, it'll have to be called back into the House to start a new round of voting. It is worth noting that if the Senate gets a 50-50 draw, Vice President Kamala Harris could vote 51 to 50 through. Only after both the House and the Senate pass the deal can be submitted to the White House and sent into law by Biden. Only after the legislation can the norm of the U.S. debt default to be successfully lifted. This round of the U.S. debt selling game timeline. On January 13, 2023, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen sent a letter to Congress saying that the U.S. would hit $31.4 trillion statutory debt selling on January 19th, and that the Treasury would start taking some 
extraordinary measures with cash and extraordinary measures likely supporting it until early June. It is worth noting that it is not uncommon for the U.S. debt to hit a ceiling, but the market panic is rare. The reason may be related to the current extremely tight monetary policy in the U.S., and the regional banking crisis and the re recession expectations, and the U.S. Treasury Secretary Angela Yellen's frequent warnings and further ignited the panic. A White House Board of Economic Advisors estimates the default would plunge 45 percent. Moody's also estimated that the unemployment rate will soon will roar by 5 percent, meaning that about 8 million Americans are out of work. At the same time, the debt ceiling will not be able to cope with the downturn with fiscal stimulus, leading to a deeper recession. That's all I have for today. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and like. See you next episode.